Well, I hope everyone's packed their bags and ready to go to school because we're going to be uh, taking a look at this speeder bike pursuit stuff. So uh, I have like a thousand different ways I thought about starting an intro for this video. But uh, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be getting on the bus to school. I hope you got your English degree because this is a lot to go through. And I, yeah, well, you might not need English. You might also need math as well. But so they start off like welcome to the speeder bike pursuit raid preview post woo here's a sneak peek of all the stuff going on cg miller did a whole spiel about seeing the movie in theaters back in the 80s it's like cool man i don't care how about you don't make a raid that requires people to sit down for hours on end after you post information on it to decipher how to like run it how about you don't do that so there's gonna be massive differences on how you do things, how the units are defeated, point, how you get points, synergies, mods apparently will be impacting the battle and what your abilities do. What your abilities do, Jack, Jack, Jack Deadly Squad. I was trying, to, I was looking at the clock to see how long I've been talking in just over a minute. So yeah, your abilities do jack shit. Um, it says right here, right below that, units, basics, and specials are different. <laughs> no crap, no revives, no assists, no bonus moves. So why are we using teams that have assist? And uniques are altered to fit the raid as well. And um, let's get into the meat of potatoes of it. We'll have no health and protection bars because it's going to be exactly like the uh, is it the ult fight or one of the last fights you do in the Leia Organa G element? It's basically going to be that. Um, you'll have X amount of stacks of abilities you can have, and that'll help dictate, uh, how much you can dodge attacks, uh, how difficult the waves are going to be and all that. And, um, whenever I first saw that there was going to be, like, points for beating enemies, it immediately made me think of the Lord of the Rings raid system, which I hate as it is. I stopped playing that game because of the how god awful the raid was because how the raid worked in the lord of the rings game uh heroes of whatever middle earth uh uh you would have you'd be static in one spot in the mines of mortar you would have keep refreshing raids of the enemies uh, shadow people i don't remember if it was goblins or orcs or what i think it was orcs but um you would keep killing him and killing him, and more you killed, the more points you got, and that was it. And then there, but also there was a timer for each phase, for each team you use. You had like a ten-minute timer to do as much damage as you could before it was cut you off and moved on. I don't know if there's going to be a saying that. I don't know if there's going to be a timer in the speeder bike pursuit, but like, like you know, different icons will mean you have different stacks of stuff and all that, and it, it, there's a lot. And they say you'll earn, you'll, you'll earn points by defeating the enemy. There's no final boss in the raid. So defeat as many as you can. So it's it's literally copy and pasted from the Lord of the Rings game. Um, I don't think that was really something people wanted. Because you had people complaining whenever that raid dropped. That it was BS RNG for one of the uh, bomb guys to blow up his own people. But you know that's not here or there. But... Also, apparently you'll earn points by mitigating the amount of stacks removed on your own characters through evading attacks for repairing stacks of damage on your character. So, you have stacks of damage you get to get rid of and all that. And it's not, like I said, it's not, you, you have no health of protection. It's all based on these stupid stacks of crap. So, we have four different enemies to recruit, scout, well it's just a recruit, but... Scout Trooper recruit, Scout Trooper himself, the Scout Trooper Commando, and the Shadow Scout Trooper. And you can look at all the abilities that they have. The recruit has Hot Pursuit, which removes four stacks of damage from target enemy. Uh, Self Repair repairs four stacks of damage on uh, self. I don't know why it says remove. Wouldn't you be? Wouldn't you want to apply four stacks of damage on the target enemy? You would think. Uh, to take out the recruit, you have to use either you have to it either has to have 50 stacks of damage, 20 stacks of extract, 25 stacks of sideswipe, or 30 stacks of temper. And each of those th bottom three, I believe, are based off different factions. Like I know the timber one is Ewoks. Uh, distract might be like Imperial troopers or rebels. I don't know honestly. They unless I've completely missed it somewhere, which I may have because I haven't completely memorized all this stuff. It might be later on in the thing, but you know, I'm not going to read through every single ability, but each 
each different scout trooper has a different different number of requirements of stacks of damage distract side swipe and timber you have to have on it to beat it it has to only be one but it has to be one of those four and you know whenever they get enraged to gain more speed and blah 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 um and then the com the scout trooper itself you know it needs the same no it needs more things a side swipe less things as uh timber and a couple more things to distract to be knocked out the commander 80 stacks of damage, 45 of distract, 30 of sideswipe, 30 of timber. I don't know why it says remove. Why Why would you be removing four stacks of damage from all enemies? I don't understand that. I don't know if that's just like a typo on their end. I hope it's not, or if I'm just stupid. The shadow one, you need 100 stacks of damage, 40 of distract, 45 of sideswipe, and 40 of timber. And yeah, I do hope we get the shadow scout trooper. That'd be pretty cool, but I highly doubt we will anytime soon. Or even the commander. Just more Imperials would be cool. That's all that. And then the next part, going over the characters and their new abilities. They have a whole freaking whole thing here. Only one person has an ultimate, which would be Leia Organ herself, which is called It's Going Down. And everyone has the same basic ability. Uh, it looks like the Rebels will all have evasive maneuvering. The well, Not all of them, but some of them will. Which is confusing because then there's some that have get alongside that one. Uh, Hera has forest friends. Uh, Landa has open fire. And you know, it. there seems to be no rhyme or reason really as to who has what. Maybe it's based off of... Well, no, it's not. I was going to say maybe it's based off of like if they're an attack supporter or a healer or a tank. But no, because Captain Rex is a support, right? Right? Is he or is he an attacker? Uh, Captain Rex. Yeah, he's a support. And I know Chewie's an attacker, right? See, that's what... Uh, like I said, I don't know what the rhyme or reason is for these specials. But some will have hasty repairs, which will help you with healing the damage off yourself. Some will have divert attention, evasive maneuvering, and such like that. Uh, Leia will have open fire... Wedge will have open. It's, it doesn't really. It, there seem like I said, there doesn't seem really be a rhyme or reason. Some of them, like not not all the Ewoks have forest friends. Some have divert. It's I, I don't know. And then granted abilities, uh, there will be faction specific uh, granted abilities for the rebels. Whenever they use a basic, they repair two stacks of damage on all allies. And this character gains a stack of shield for each stack of repair above max on self the imperials will start the battle with five stacks of jam when this character uses this ability they remove bonus stacks of damage to target enemy equal to the number of stacks of evade on all allies then this character loses all stack of evade at ewoks whenever they use a basic they remove bonus stacks of timber to target enemy equal to the number of stacks of jam on all allies and whenever this enemy defeats an Whenever an enemy is defeated with Timber, all Ewok allies gain two stacks of jam. So, the jam thing is with Ewoks, evades with the Imperials, and then everyone has repair, yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to bother reading through all of this crap for the mod stuff, because it is a lot. Like, there is a lot going on here that I do not understand why they felt the need to fucking monkey with. I, I know that seems like a wild concept for this game being so old. People would be like, why don't you want things to change? Or why don't you want things different? Because this is supposed to be a mobile game at the end of the day. This isn't supposed to be a full-time job of trying to decipher how you're supposed to mod a character for a fucking raid that lasts a week. I don't want to spend X amount of hours every week remodding characters just to do to kill as many like AI enemies as I can. And then like, you know, health provides stacks of shield based on the character's max health start of battle. Shield will be consumed to block stacks of incoming damage. Uh, apparently uh, you will have a cap of 24 stacks of shield. Same as protection, but that max for a combined total of 48 stacks total of shield. Physical accuracy will remove additional stacks of side swipe from when you use the ability removing side swipe. Physical crit avoidance will remove additional stacks of timber when you use the ability removing timber. 
so on and so forth but you know it's all different for each different stat i mean we'll go through the rest of them real quick just because why not physical crit damage you have chances to reduce ally cooldowns by one at the start of the turn the higher you have it so if like han or chewie have loads of crit damage that'll have a 25 percent chance of reducing allies cooldowns by one crit damage you have you gain 30 percent team when cooldowns are reduced by the above effect from the physical crit damage i believe or not crit damage but crit chance your attack damage i don't know why it's called attack it probably means special and physical damage you remove 10 12 additional stacks of damage when you do the removing damage ability armor you block additional stacks of damage by two if you have 70 percent or higher but one if it's only 50 to 60 69.99 percent and then zero if it's zero to basically 49.99 percent physical evasion you gain additional stacks of evasion whenever you gain evasion <laughs> um health steal you repair three stacks of damage when you remove 16 or more stacks of damage okay potency uh, the higher you have, the more you remove stacks of distract when you do removing distract. Uh, tenacity, you gain more stacks of evasion after evading. But you keep more. Not gain, keep more, I should say. So if you have a lot of tenacity on characters, that'll help with your invasions and all that fun stuff. So apparently remodding will be key for this raid. I, I don't understand why. It's You're sitting static and killing enemies that reappear off the side of the screen probably on speeder bikes and you kill them and you keep killing them until you uh get them enraged and you lose because you can't revive and all that fun stuff raid modifiers and cadence update much like the raid with with the changes to the crate dragon raid you'll be a change to the cadence of stuff launch costs will be doubling from ninety thousand to one hundred eighty thousand, but the ticket cap will also be increasing from 150,000 because it's you know at 150,000 right now to 210,000 to you know offset the fact that you wouldn't have enough to even launch the new raid otherwise. Uh, apparently, well not apparently, there'll also be uh, making the cadence. They'll allow they'll be adjusting the cadence to allow longer time between runs, but rewards will be adjusted to stay consistent. And you know the, there will be also more attempts than you have with the crate dragon raid instead of five attempts you get eight because each team you only get a trio of characters you don't get five people on spider speeder bikes you only get three so that's why you'll have you'll be able to do 24 you'll be able to use 24 of the different characters from this list and that'll help you decide on how well, uh, yeah Hmm. Apparently, also, <laughs> we would also like to note that while Relic 9 characters will provide a power advantage, the way in which Enrage works will encourage folks to try different team compositions to earn the most out of each attempt. Basically, what that translates to is, even though you may have high relics on these characters, that doesn't mean diddly squat, because you know what? It depends on how many people you can kill and how many stacks of everything you can balance. I hope you have good luck memorizing this all, because we aren't going to explain this. <laughs> also, they have not told us what the uh, point for each, like how, how many points you need to get for each uh, crate. Like, to get the rewards, obviously, because that's, that's kind of what people care about, you know? Uh, they don't tell us at all. And then there's more, here's the levels for the modifiers. Uh, you, enemies will gain increasing amounts of speed, maxing out 25 at level 6. Also, it does not tell you what relic levels you need for these. So, if I, uh, if I'm to be a guessing person, just hang with me here. This will be like a gear, maybe 11. That'll be 12 for level 2. 3 will be like relic 1. Four will be relic three, five will be relic five, and then maybe relic seven plus for level seven, level six, I mean. But obviously, the further, the higher up in difficulty you go, the more things will change. Like, you'll, at the lowest level, you'll gain, in, you'll remove an additional four stacks of damage with each ability. The number of stacks required to defeat each enemy is increased by 10%, and the higher you go, you know, the more things will change. And like, every three turns, apparently at level two, the at, from level 2 onward, they will increasingly remove stacks of damage. At level 4, they'll remove stacks of distract on them. At level 5, they'll remove stacks of sideswipe. And then same with level 6, but it's more and more stacks, obviously, the higher up you go. And also, the number of stacks required to defeat each, each, 
the number of stacks required to defeat each enemy obviously increases the higher up in the uh, modifiers you go. You the biggest points you get for defeat or even doing anything in this raid, You're defeating enemies, evading stacks, and repairing your units. These are the points you get. The defeat a recruit, you get 8,000 points. To defeat a scout trooper, which is the OG one, you get 15k. The commander, you get 20. The scout, shadow scout trooper, you get 30. Successfully invade da incoming damage, 500 points, and repairing damage, 500. So basically, if you can manage to take out a lot more of these than you can of the recruits, the more damage each of your runs will do. The problem is we d we don't know several things. We don't know how long each run will last. Is it until you die? Uh, is it timed? Because if it's timed, I'm going to rage because you guys really killed my enjoyment of the Lord of the Rings game besides how fucking boring it is uh, by having a timer for each run. Timers on runs on raids are so counterintuitive whenever it's just based on, oh, how much, uh, how many of these, of this uh, enemy AI can you kill in X amount of time? Like, you know, not X amount of time, but like, how many can you, how many can you beat before you get beaten yourself kind of deal, you know? Uh, let's see. The main things impacted by chain, by chance in this raid are evasion, cooldown, reduction, enemy targeting. Increasing stacks of evasion will give characters a maximum chance of 40% to avoid an incoming attack, affecting, affecting both the survivability of your characters and the damage output from Imperial Troopers. I don't know why they're so heavily focused. L literally... They, they they focus so heavily on Imperial Trooper like uh, interactions. They don't really talk about the Rebels or Ewoks. It's very, very confusing and kind of makes me wonder if they have anything set up for the other two big factions for this, you know? Uh, cooldown reduction is both a chance effect and a randomly targeted effect applying to one of your other allies. Well, that's a... Oh, no shit. It just says uh, you might have a chance of increasing cooldowns on your ally. It doesn't say who. That, mean, that can mean higher stacks of GM more evasion and repair or just extra chances to focus on spe defeating specific types of enemies okay uh, now for the whole raid economy change this is what it's going to happen uh so obviously if you're not running the crate raid you are going to be extremely extremely screwed over because you're going to be losing all of the mark three currency from it all of the mark three currency right now is going to be going straight into the speeder by crate once it drops obviously and then if your guild's not able to really do much in the speeder bike pursuit you'll be getting maxing out at just shy just just shy a 17,000 mark one 12 and a half thousand mark two and zero mark three compared to the you know almost 8,500 mark one right now 5,500 5, mark two and 5,000 mark three this uh for the rated for speeder bike rate itself you'll be getting just shy of seventeen thousand. you'll get the twelve and a half thousand from the mark two and you'll get ten thousand from mark three so if you don't use those mark three in the week you have between each raid iteration you are going to be hitting cap rapidly so overall god i've been ran i've been talking for 18 minutes i this is a very like I said, you need an English degree and maybe a little even bit of a mathematical degree to fully understand what to do with this. Because especially with the mod stuff being so prevalent, I'm not a fan of that. So apparently also these ranges for the for the mod like stuff and all that, how many stacks of like shield, uh side swipe removal, timber and all that, yada yada yada. Is also it's also taking into account leader and unique bonuses as well as the mods. So uh, th that they don't uh, that's another thing they they, they kind of mention synergies in the middle of this whole like how do you like uh, what's diff what's different from previous raids but they don't really specify it there are no leaders there are like I, probably the way it is ideally you'll want to do um something obviously with leaders in the leadership ability slot like not leadership ability slot in the leadership spot is what i'm trying to say Obviously, you want them there so that way you can give extra bonuses and, like, extra stuff to your allies. But, like, which leaders will be the best will be, like, the turn. Obviously, for the Rebels, it'll be Leia as the best lead. For, like, Imperial Troopers, you have a wide variety of leaders. You have Admiral Piet. You have General Beers. You have Aiden. You have Moff Gideon. You have four different teams you can run there. And then, like, Rebels, everyone and their mom, it feels like, is a leader. I know Akbar is... Uh, Hera, Jedi Knight, Luke, Lando, Wedge. Is that all the rebels? It is. Okay, so you have 
You can do potentially six different Ts if you also include the uh, Leia GL for Rebels. Ewoks, you have Cheap Chirpa. Tebow. <laughs> you got two leaders there. <laughs> Not a lot there. Uh, but, like, you have a lot of options, obviously. Uh, and, like I said, we don't know. They didn't say what levels these require for relics if there will be levels or is this like or, or are they just like completely ditching the relic requirements because you've also got to remember they said for this is even though like relic nine characters will provide a power advantage the way in rage the way in the way in which enrage works will encourage folks to try different scheme compositions to earn the most out of each attempt it kind of seems to be worded as like it raid like relic levels won't be as prudent as the crate dragon raid because obvious oh i mean higher relics will give you more stacks of stuff obviously like go figure yeah but like they don't flat out say like what each level will be because maybe there won't be any relic requirements or maybe there will be like the same it'll be like the same from the crate raid like each like increase like the max will be like a uh, relic eight plus and then five and then so on and so forth down to level one i don't know it, it's just um I don't know this is i i didn't when i got tagged as i was on my way home about hey where's the uh, uh fucking ezekiel tagged me and said hey where's your video covering this uh raid info i'm like well i'm not home so i'll get on it whenever i get home but like here it is man i i hope you enjoy this 20 plus minute video about me trying to figure all this out or like trying to understand it because it's very weird. It, 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 there's a lot. There's a lot of words here, but until we get it in the game, words don't equal what it actually means. I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Because we can we can hit, we can sit here and speculate about which abilities. Oh, like what team compositions are you gonna want to run with the specials for your rebels and imperial troopers and Ewoks and yada yada yada. Like we we can't really do that until we get the raid itself. We can't speculate on how to fucking remod i don't want to remod for a raid cg I, and i understand why they kind of want to uh, encourage people to do that one to waste credits and two because fuck it i guess i don't know but like three they're just lazy and they want to make things more difficult than necessary like like the circles back to my one of my earlier points why is it that we have to have people sit down analyze everything you throw at us and then put out videos and guides on oh this is the best way to mod this character well, this will like this is like for future future uh con like future videos and all that from people like this will be the best way to mod this character so you get x y and z buffs boosted this way so that we get x y and z stacks of whatever boosted kind of thing you know it seems it seems very counterintuitive because people we have 24 hours a day to live I don't think people want to spend X amount of hours per day remodding, rerunning one fucking raid for one run before they have to do seven more, you know? It seems very counterintuitive to my fucking time. I am a human being. I have things to do other than just sit here and rerun the same raid all the damn time. And yes, I understand. Yeah, the raid got boosted to six days instead of three. Shouldn't you be happy about that? I mean, yes, but it shouldn't have. To, it shouldn't have to be like, ah, yes. Let me, let me, and that's gonna be the problem. That's gonna, that's gonna be another problem. It'll be six days, and I'll still have people waiting until the last fucking day or even couple hours to do damage in it. And I, 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 I don't get it. Like, I understand people have lives. Trust me, but like. This is going to make my life harder as a guild officer to get people to do anything in it. I already have enough difficulty getting people to just get us to crack 130 mil in the crate dragon raid. How difficult is it going to be to crack whatever levels it takes to get the X, Y, and Z like crate rewards for this raid? Because we, like I said, we don't know um, how many points it'll take to get to each level of the raid rewards. Because they tell us how many points you get from killing people, but they don't tell you how many points you need to get each box. I would imagine with, you know, killing a Shadow Scout being 30,000 points and then 20 for a Commander and 15 for a Scout Trooper, the damage, uh, the amount of points you need to even get to the boxes where you are right now are going to be higher. But I have no idea. This is all just speculation on my part. But that's enough rambling from me on this. 
Hopefully this makes a little bit more sense compared to what CG put out because I don't know what to tell you. This is like my best explanation, I guess, or review of this stuff. There will be more videos about this as the raid drops. I will hopefully be providing in that pile of fun. But in the meantime, let me know what you think of this um, English degree essay final test in the comments below. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later on. I hope you have a good rest of your day.